Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 21, Thoughts. This episode is called SOS Part 1. So, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but nothing after it. Another episode I love. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the site after Strikers. And then there's some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the episode. So, yeah, we are... This is... Probably an even better season finale two-parter than season one had so yeah they're doing a really solid job on that just yeah i i wasn't entirely sure if they were gonna they've pretty much resolved you know the two shields have merged at this point i thought that you know a couple of episodes ago i thought that would be the the final fight that the um, the two shields would fight against each other but yeah have, you know they've been building towards the the inhumans you know for a little while now so yeah it's it's having having the inhumans and shield fight is very very cool really glad we got to see i f i feel like her name is alicia see her powers you know i was hoping for that and yeah you know she can make duplicates of herself yeah, yeah, I can see how that would, you know, how how Jaying felt confident that she'd be able to stop Reina, and yeah, so the you know we return to Sky catching up with with her mom, and you know after the after the bullets fired, shots fired, and the you know now Jaying claims you know Gonzalez said that. Inhumans have to be exterminated, which, yeah, that that would indeed get full Inhumans support. Holy crap! Did she decide this when Zabo was like arguing with her in public? She was afraid to lose power, so she starts a war. Holy crap! Just yeah, and you know, yeah, extremely relevant. Um, although I guess in 2015 it wasn't as much as you know, but. Yeah, um, American leaders have done it. You know, Putin started war with Ukraine because of him losing power. It's a huge part of why Netanyahu treats the Palestinians so terribly. You know, if you have an external enemy, you know, yeah, you can, you know, who's going to who's going to openly be against you if you're the one keeping the enemy at bay? You know, and in each of these cases, it's a it's a completely unnecessary war. They could treat the people they're waging war against with humanity. Let's see, although I suppose some would say that the Inhumans are more similar to the the um, ah I can't believe I'm playing uh, Hamas than you know. Than, than Netanyahu and the Israeli government, since they are the minority, but they are an extremely powerful. You know, they they are in in numbers, sure, but in power, they do they they are, you know, capable of taking on the military of another country. So yeah, it it is more like when you know, yeah. When when too powerful, when a powerful country, in order to for the leader to maintain their power, starts a war with another, and the frame job gets even more intense. The you know they they hijack uh, one of the one of the Quinjets, fire some rockets on the building, which later you know some of the some of the Shield people point out you know yeah it destroyed you know got rid of the body of Gonzalez so that. You couldn't, which, that was a thing I was wondering, it, because, like, if you look at the body, Gonzalez got his gun out, and then it was, you know, turned to stone, the gun was ripped out of his hand, the, the hand broke. So if you examined the body, obviously you'd be able to tell, okay, there's no way that he fired these bullets, you know, the, the, yeah. yeah and, and I feel like, yeah, also, there'd probably be, what do they call it? Gunpowder residue on Jia Ying's hands, which would, have, you know, prove that she was the one firing the gun. And, yeah. I would, you know, when when Sky fought off 
a shield agent. I was like, oh, this is amazing. I'm so glad to see Sky kick ass. And then she takes on May. Holy crap, that was amazing. And yeah, you know, it is one of those things of like, they know a lot of each other's moves because they trained together. May taught her, you know, seemingly everything she knows, which, you know, both of them have an idea of what the other might do, which makes a huge difference in a fight like that. Holy crap, Zabo is creepy when he's, like, singing. And, yeah, we learn, you know, yeah, Jiayin can heal, but she feels all of the pain. And, yeah, you know, obviously, she, yeah, so she felt all the pain that the, you know, that Whitehall inflicted on her. And then, you know, the, the... Uh, yeah, and as she was healing, felt all that pain, and then she sees S.H.I.E.L.D., and she's like, they're exactly like Whitehall, you can understand why she attacks. Great scene between Sky and Reyna, and I'm really glad that she was very vague about it, because, like, when she says, you know, you're, I know you don't believe me, in fact, we never speak again, like, I don't know, maybe I should have, maybe some viewers did, but I didn't immediately clue in on, oh, she's going to die, like, really soon. And, let's see. And, you know, she points out, every rose has its thorn. And, yeah, then we learn, you know, Jai Ying, you know, she said, I, I need to heal, please get everyone out of here. And then, you know, a guy is brought to her, when when she's you know when sky isn't there to see it and she like yeah she steals the life force of others like a vampire or even worse blueprint brian brian and yeah that you know it's it's great because there's nothing on the show that contradicts this. We, you know, there's we've never seen her heal without stealing life force. We've just been aware that she has healed somewhere off screen. But yeah, this is what she's been doing all along. When Zabo said, you know, I I patched her back together. Yeah, that you know that's part of it. He brought her a bunch of people that she could suck the life force out of to bring her back, and that was, you know, that was him becoming a monster. He didn't just randomly kill, or or kill just to get revenge. He killed to bring her back to life, which, again, you know, classic sci-fi trope. And, yeah, the, the you know, of course, if she's willing to to do that, you know, she's she's been doing this for decades. She did this before Whitehall met her, and, you know, back then she was maybe being worshipped, you know, and they were like, it is an honor to, to give your life, to, to prolong that of Jai Ying, you know, and the, the yeah, the, you know, if she's willing to do that, if she's been doing that for, for all these decades, you know, maybe a hundred years at, at this point, we knew that, you know, we, we, let's see, the oldest flashback we've seen her in was like 44 or something or right around that time at least and you know she looked as young then as she does in in, in these episodes set in 2014 15 so you know there's some chance that yeah so at the very least those 70 years and if she's been doing that for so long yeah of course she's willing to to engage in in a war because human life does not mean that much to her. You know, that's the, the, those of us who try to, to who, who don't want war, it's, you know, one of the big things is we, we hate the, the massive loss of life and all the pain and misery it inflicts. But yeah, you know, if like she, she, she sucks souls the way that the rest of us like drink water. It's just, yeah, you know, keeps me healthy. So just, yeah, of course she doesn't think of, of the, just, yeah, really, really nicely done. And, and, you know, if she does not think of, you know, regular people, non-inhumans. If you're an inhuman, she thinks you're great. If you're a non-inhuman, 
yeah, you know, she does not think she she sees you as a potential enemy, as a potential oppressor. And yeah, so Bobby is being asked to confess, and Grant points out, so Kara tells me you don't like needles. Oh god. I have a very strong stomach for violence and gore. Um, I don't need to see needles shoved under fingernails for protracted amount. Like it hap it starts fairly early in the episode, maybe ten minutes in or something, and like, yeah, for for a really long time, you know. And they'll cut back to it, and oh, there's some more nails in there. Just holy crap. You know, I'm not saying they shouldn't have done it. I'm saying it was super effective. And, yeah, and they, they explain the, the drug that Zabo has been taken taking. And, yeah, you completely understand, you know, like, what was it, gorilla testosterone or something like that. You know, yeah, okay, that would make him, you know, like, yeah. It, it, I, I, I feel like... I forget if gorillas are super violent in real life, or is it? There's, there's one. No, wait. Yeah, yeah. They are violent. It's, it's like the, the sexually, they're not super. Which is, you know, what was it like? Bang Bang Gorilla or wh whatever that song was called. Um, Tom the Shadows pointed out. You know, gorillas don't look that violent when they're, but they're capable of violence at least. I'm not saying they're like, oh, you know, completely unstable. It made Zabo unstable because it doesn't belong in his body. And, yeah, we're told, you know, Coulson has three hours before they attack Afterlife. And, yeah, if if not, holy crap, that's, yeah, I, I'm really glad I, I watched the finale tomorrow that I didn't have to wait, like, Let's see, was it one of the ones where they, they probably had to wait? Oh, okay, yeah, this did air, um, both parts of this did air the same day, which, yeah, I, if, so, you know, although normally I get to skip the week wait, this is one case where I actually have to wait a day where others didn't have to, you know, they just had to wait through an ad break. That's fair enough. And, yeah, Coulson and Zabo you know, really great conversation, and, and I really appreciate Colson trying to appeal to him. Right, and the, the IMDb poster thing for this episode is Fitzsimmons and Colson standing with um, icers facing down Zabo. And let's see. Yeah, and the the... Yeah, as Bobby is being tortured, she tries to appeal to Kara, saying, you know, he's molding you. I kind of expected her to use the word grooming, but, you know, molding works. And Kara's like, I know all about Grant. You can't tell me something about him that's awful that he didn't already tell me. Uh, you know, yeah, very, very compelling. You know, it is one of those things... Because, like, the moment, you know, in that situation, you risk the the tortured being able to, to turn your partner on you, you know, which might work no matter how much you are able to turn your partner on. And, the, the you know, because they, they've, you know, they don't have the, the gag in because they want her to be able to speak. You know, there's a lot of great TV scenes of someone who's being tortured trying to verbally manipulate the the tormentor, and yeah, this is yet another one. I feel like this lives up to, to the very high standard. And yeah, great conversation between Reina and Jiaying, and I think Reina went there knowing that it was going to happen. You know, she, like, yeah, because she, you know, she said to Sky, even in darkness, you will see, which, you know, sounds like, it sounds like gobbledygook, you know, 
so it's it sounds like one of those just yeah c complete nonsense absurd but yeah she saw even though it was dark she saw her mom kill Reina and you know right before Jaying attacks Reina repeat you know Jaying doesn't know it's a repeat but we the audience pick up on hey that's what she said to Sky you know even in darkness people will see and yeah you know, Jaying kills Reina because Reina's a threat. If you, if your power is based on a lie, truth tellers become the enemy. Which, you know, in in real life, there's no such thing as seeing the future. But, you know, a lot of powerful people have fought against free press because if you know that that might take away their power if the the truth comes out so again very very credible Let's see and yeah we realized that sky saw the whole thing and yeah very compelling scene between the two and jaying says the war was inevitable and yeah with that kind of mindset of course you can justify attacking someone who's seemingly at least claiming to be making peace you know it was inevitable and and she even goes on to say me attack you know the fact that i attacked them first gave us an advantage you know which yeah that that's how you rationalize you're the good guy they're the bad guys and i i really appreciate the 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 smart writing on this show and holy crap, Bobby, like, I had kind of accepted, okay, we're probably not going to get yet another amazing, badass fight scene with, with Bobby in this episode. You know, as, as much ass as Adrienne Palicki can kick in her sleep, you know, okay, she's, she's captured, she's being tortured, you know, what are, how would they possibly... And she, she like verbally, she gets Ward really, really close, and then she gets out of the the um the the, the shackles, grabs his head, smacks it in the table, and we get an amazing fight. And a little later, Kara joins in, like holy crap! Um, and you know, yeah, like when we saw her with the shackles around her her wrists, at first it was like, okay, there's no way she's getting out of that, but. The table is wood. It's not like it, it takes it takes a lot of adrenaline, but you know, yeah, she has that because her, her brain is responding to all of the pain she's feeling. It's pumping adrenaline and trying to get away from the thing that's causing pain. And she's just been hiding that. You know, she's been sitting as if she isn't feeling is if, if she isn't getting all this adrenaline. And yeah, you know, one really quick movement you know, I, I guess it depends on how, how sturdy the wooden table is. But, no, I feel like it was, you know, it, it felt credible to me. And just, yeah. And again, you know, Grant is a great fighter. Bobby is a great fighter. It's like, you know, in season one, it was Grant and May, who are also, you know, May is also an incredible fighter. It was the two of them facing off. So, yeah, really, really cool. And, yeah, Gordon teleports in uh, you know Alicia Lincoln and they go to town and Zabo collapses in the cell which does of course you know Colson is going to try to to save him because it might you know he's Sky's father and and I really do like you know can I have a glass of water and he takes it and he just pours it over can I have another one to drink <laughs> you know, because if he said, can I have a glass of water? I'd like to pour it over my face. Coulson might be like, no, uh, just let me know if you need something to drink, you know. But yeah, if he pours it over his face and asks for another one to drink, that might work. Because Coulson was willing to give him a glass of water to drink, you know. It's, yeah, and let's see. Yeah, and and you know they get him onto the 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 medical tickle thing, and you know Gemma 
gives him was it was it like adrenaline or so it was it was some kind of thing to to bring back you know and he comes back and you know says so that's what i was missing and just oh no you know and apparently in the comics his character is known as mr hyde i see it now because he's got the veins and the you know just crazed face and you know and they manage you know they close the the glass door and it's like okay that bought us you know at least you know, yeah, at first, it's like, okay, I mean, he's not going to be able to get through that, but he, you know, he keeps hitting, and eventually he gets through, and it's one of the, I love when TV shows, you know, because, like, once we see him hitting, like, there's still some tension there, you know, the, if he just sat down, it'd be like, okay, no more tension, but, like, for a while, we're, we're like, okay, it'll at least, at the very least, it will take him a long time to get through, but then he bursts through, and then we have action again and you know they fire like maybe a dozen ice rounds total into him and all it is like oh i can't feel my legs which is great because it like it buys again buys him a little time but it doesn't mean he's not dangerous you know for a little while there's there's maybe a minute of time or of screen time or so where he and colson are just having a conversation you know colson's trying to talk him down you know, this is Jai Ying's plan, it's not yours. And also, I appreciate the detail that even when Coulson calls Sky Daisy, Zabo still hates that. You know, she's Daisy to me and Jai Ying, not to anyone else. And, you know, even, even, it really is one of those things where, like, pretty much anything you do, it's gonna set him off. And you have the, so yeah, you know, for a little while, for maybe a minute of screen time. Zabo is like moving a little slower because he can't feel his legs. You know, it doesn't mean he can't stand or walk, but it means he has a little bit more trouble moving fast with with his legs. But then he picks up this massive thing and throws at Colson, which yeah, you don't need feeling in your legs to to pick up and throw something that your strength, the the strength of your your arms and upper body in general can you know yeah can can work. See, and I appreciate the multiple mentions of Melinda May. I did not mean for the alliteration. She points out multiple times that she's really looking forward to taking out Grant. And yeah, you know the the, the after Grant and Kara managed to subdue Bobby, and you know he like breaks part of her leg in order to make, you know, so that she can't keep fighting them, even if she manages to, to get free again. And, you know, he's like, I know what to do, you know. And then we see he, he put her in this chair and set up an assault rifle aimed at the door so that, you know, and, and yeah, contacts Lance so that he, you know, he knows where to go. And, yeah, I, I, I hope that somehow Lance doesn't end up shot, but I, yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure how they're going to be able to open the door and get out of the way in time. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and then we have the, um, ah, I forget exactly when it is, but, but yeah, you know, um, Fitz is like, Gemma, let's run! And, you know, Zabo is, like, chasing after them. Once they slowed down by the big door, that's when I clued in, this is a trap, you know. It's not that, that Fitz and, and Simmons are incapable of fear, but they are very capable of planning ahead, you know. And Coulson smashes the car into Zabo, pinning him against the wall, and it's like, okay, now let's talk, <laughs> you know, which, yeah, um, this is not the only, ah, is it a spoiler, I, I'll just say, there's something somewhat similar in an episode of uh, Terminator the Sinochronic Chronicles, that scene is overall more complex than this scene was, but I still, it's, it's a very cool move, you know, because, yeah, That'll slow that, that the threat down, you know. If you can't stop them permanently with what you have on you, yeah. If you can, if you can use a car to pin them against something, yeah. That's that's gonna. 
and let's see. Yeah, and we get this this really awesome, like, has to be a tribute. You know, Gordon teleporting in and taking out. You know, I appreciate earlier there is like, oh, we've doubled the guard. Uh, yeah, not going to be enough. Have you seen Gordon? You know, Gordon teleports in, starts taking out. Got to be a, a reference to the awesome Nightcrawler White House scene in X2, which... Yeah, big fan. Uh, that's an excellent thing to reference, you know, because because we have the thing of you know he teleports and gets takes care of like one guy, and then we don't, we don't see everything that happens. That's very similar to one part of the the Nightcrawler scene. And let's see, yeah, and and you know we see the the Inhumans, you know, really making serious progress on on the vessel. I took the battleship, and yeah, loved the bit where you know Mac is is like trying to confront Alicia, and she's like, "Follow me," and then she splits off into like five people, and he has this great line. Uh, let's see where he says, "I can't wait to get off this boat." <laughs> yeah, just really, really cool. Um, let's see. I, I, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing the the end of it. Also very cool to see Lincoln so badass. Like, he, he uses the electrical power to just, like, pick up a guy. Just, yeah. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's the first time. It was also very badass when he took out a guy by, like, zapping him in the heart. I guess what I'm saying is, that was Hydra. This is S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, he's, he's completely comfortable taking on S.H.I.E.L.D. like this. And let's see. Yes, so some MDB trivia for this episode. Kara says the line, I will always stand with Ward. Hashtag stand with Ward was the Twitter hashtag for fans that hoped Ward would turn back into a hero. And in June 2016, IGN ranked the episodes together as the second best in the series. Right, and yeah, the scenario of an naval ship being taken over by intruders with only one crew member, a chef being left to fight them, was the plot of Under Siege. And let's see. Yeah, the self inflicted gunshot and inhuman takeover of the jet and subsequent attack are classic false flag attacks. An attack by a group on their own using a weapon from another group so the opposing group can be blamed. And for some reason, like 15 people thought that was helpful. 18 people thought it wasn't, I, yeah, I feel like some of this is just, like, petty, yeah, anyway, um, right, and I like when, when, um, when Fitz is finishing Hunter's sentences, because, you know, it's, it's kind of like a reverse, he got used to Mac finishing his sentences, and now he's finishing his own sentences, and now he's also finishing Hunter's sentences. And let's see, yeah, and I also quite like when Alicia says, I'm headed downstairs to secure the armory. I'm also upstairs in the conference room. Loved seeing Alicia get to to actually do some, some action this time. I 100% see how, you know, the, the actress Alicia Vela Bailey playing Alicia Whitley, you know, She's she's also like um, Adrian Palicki's stunt double, and yeah, I I am very much a supporter of putting stunt people like very making them very visible on camera. Uh, you know, Quentin Tarantino did this with Zoe Bell, and yeah, big fan. Love when it happens. I can hardly wait until tomorrow to to watch. The next episode, holy crap, SOS indeed. Uh, yeah, make my Marvel.